of industrial scale since 2016. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Dash. I actually updated this for the uh, price movement in BTC we've seen in the last 36 hours at about 2 a.m. this morning. But um, the Bitcoin blockchain itself is formulaic. That's the beautiful thing about this business. We don't have to guess what our revenue is going to be. Our revenue is directly derived by our hash power as a function of network hash rates. When you're looking at the Bitcoin blockchain in particular, the protocol of the network regulates the time it takes to solve a block. 10 minutes on average. Every 2016 blocks, which is 10 minutes times 2016 is 14 days. If it took 15 days to solve 14 days worth of blocks, it slows down the difficulty or makes it easier to mine to speed up the block creation time. If it took 13 days, it makes difficulty more are more aggressive to slow down the block creation time. This is to regulate the supply of Bitcoin that will be released over the course of time. Right now there's 17.4 million Bitcoin outstanding. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. On a daily basis, with 144 blocks, 1,800 coins being rewarded only to miners this is the only new coins being created every day. At today's pricing, it's a $10.2 million reward or incentive system paid to miners and is, I can't read the number, $3.7 billion annually today. The Our share of the reward, the reward is a function of our hash rate versus network hash rates. From a mining standpoint, and I'm, I'm going to try and keep this fairly high level, and you know we've got a booth outside if anybody wants to talk in more detail. Uh, precise economics, there's, there's a several, there's a series of external factors which are the things we can't control. Market pricing, network difficulty, and the hardware landscape. On the internal side, it's what we can do to vertically integrate and maximize margins on actual production. First of all, industrial scale and the economies and the cost savings that come with that. Uh, two, power cost and power efficiency, which I'll talk more about in a couple of slides. Three, the performance and monitoring software to be able to diagnose underperforming hardware, as well as repair them in-house versus having to rely upon third-party manufacturing uh, warranty programs, as well as mining pool fees. What you're seeing here is a price versus difficulty chart, and you know many of you will see this and question where things are going. This is readily available on, on any of the major Bitcoin data websites. 2017 was a period of you know, what I'll call irrational exuberance, the, uh, the fear of missing out trade where Bitcoin made its way into mainstream media and people were buying it because every day they're seeing it go up $500,000 and didn't want to miss out. There's been a significant correction this year um, but, but what, what I wanted to articulate with this slide in particular was what you're seeing happen in the recent weeks between October 18th and, and today. And you've seen difficulty, the top line in green there, flatten out. Actually, on October 18th, we saw the first drop in difficulty we've seen since June, 3.65%. It being stable two weeks after that and later today, seven or eight hours from now, we'll see difficulty drop in the range of around 7%. Difficulty is a mining metric. It dictates how many coins we're gonna produce with our computing power on a daily basis. And difficulty will absolutely trade lockstep with network hash rates and BTC pricing. There'll be a strong correlation. So what we're seeing recently is flatlining in difficulty and flatlining in, well, range bound, ignoring the last three 36 hours or so range bound BTC pricing, we're seeing the market approach this equilibrium from a mining standpoint where the marginal guy, the high cost miners being priced out of the market and really the only people left standing are the industrial scale vertically integrated miners like ourselves. What I wanted to articulate with this slide is uh, a picture graphical interpretation of mining today with the most the world's most popular miner, the S9 ant miner made by Bitmain. The, the most popular model is the 13.5 terahash miner. If you've taken the uh, or downloaded the most recent 
firmware upgrade from Bitmain a couple of weeks ago, you could do 13.5 terahash with 1,250 watts, 1.25 kilowatts. Today, with 100% of your power going into hashing, i.e. none of it being wasted on air conditioning or ventilation or lighting, networking, etc., uh, you can generate 55.7% margins at our cost of power, four cents US dollars per kilowatt hour. If you're spending 20%, so this is the chart on the left, in gray you'll see a PUE, power usage efficiency, uh, of 80%. So 20% of your power is going into cooling. That has about an 11% impact on your actual daily mining margins. Moving over to the right, same chart, same assumptions. All I've done is increase power costs from four cents to eight cents. You can see if you're spending 20% of your power on air conditioning, 80% PUE, and you're using eight cents per kilowatt hour power, you're losing money on your hardware. By the way, BitFarms has a power usage efficiency ratio, which I'll talk about later, of 94%. No air conditioning in Quebec. Last week was a fairly pivotal moment in our business in that we saw the world's leading Bitcoin ASIC hardware manufacturer release their new generation equipment, and uh, it's the S15. So what we'd like to do, or what we'd like to think about is, is the ability to predict network difficulties, which will impact hash power, with uh, the efficiency increases in the next generation of hardware. So what you see on the left, the, uh, the miner on the left, left chart is the S9, the current version, most, the most popular miner over the last two years. It's priced at about $21 a terahash. This is a function of how many attempts, one trillion attempts per second to solve the computational problem associated with the Bitcoin blockchain, which, which dictates rewards, etc. but too complicated. Um, the chart on the left is the S9, the chart on the right is the S15. What you see is the S15's priced at $51 a terahash, the S9's at 20. The S15's doing 17.5 terahash per second, a measure of computational efficiency for the power going into it where the S9 is doing 11. So what it is, it's a 59% increase in efficiency and 151% increase in price. What we defer from that is it makes more sense right now at our cost of power to continue buying S9s. If you infer what a new generation of miner could potentially do for difficulties, where this thing is going to stabilize, network hash rates, difficulties, where the industrial scale miner is going to end up from a profitability standpoint and, and trying to pay back hardware investments going forward. If you replaced every miner on the network today, which is around, let's just say 3.5 million S9s, and replaced them with the S15, with 59% more efficiency, your network hash rates could go to 70 or 80 exahash, or difficulties, said differently, difficulty going from current seven terahash to around 11 terahash. I'm gonna gloss over this because I think it's a little bit too technical. Regardless, the circles that we're showing are saying if we increase difficulty and this thing stabilizes, it plays out, the new generation hardware gets plugged in, you go to 515 day payback on the S9 and you're still 33% higher on the S15, 691 days. Which effectively implies that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the new generation or buying the new generation of equipment unless prices come down. The brilliant thing about this business is it's really just math. How much hash power do I have versus the network? I know exactly what the pool of rewards are going to be on a daily basis and my operating costs are very, very predictable. Power, power usage efficiency, and any overhead you've got below that. A little bit more about BitFarm. So we have 27 and a half megawatts of power running in four facilities in Quebec, 15,000 plus S9s plugged in right now. We made an announcement on Sunday last week where we just started plugging in our fifth facility. I'll show you pictures later on. It's a brand new, 10 megawatt facility in the, in the town of Magog. Our power is 100% green hydroelectricity at four cents per kilowatt hour. Our margins are very high versus many of the other miners we're competing against. We're publicly listed in Israel. 
Uh, and on Sunday, sorry, Monday this week, we actually just filed a prospectus, a regulatory filing in Canada to, to investigate a listing here in North America, a full listing on an exchange in North America. Uh, in June, sorry, August of this year, we also became what we believe is the world's first cryptocurrency miner to be audited by a big four accounting firm. We're a publicly listed company supported by Ernst & Young on the audit side. Quick overview of our operations. These are the four operating facilities. One in St. Hyacinth, this was our third newest farm. Farnham, our second farm. Cohensville, a 6.5 megawatt property, our second farm in Notre Dame, which is a very small GPU facility. That's a total of 27.5 megawatts, currently hashing at about 220 petahash, or said differently, about 0.5% of the total cryptocurrency network. Bitcoin cryptocurrency network. In addition to this, we have 135 megawatts of contracted power. This is the single biggest hurdle to entry into this business, trying to get low cost, renewable, clean energy and scale. So we have five new facilities, one, two, three, four, five, planned. We're about to start construction on our super farm, our super farm, our mega farm in Sherbrooke, seen second from the bottom, phase one, a 30 megawatt property where we've already started buying the industrial components that go into it. As I mentioned, after power and power usage efficiency, there's several things you can do to continue to maximize your operating margins and make sure that cash flow is flowing to the bottom line. One of the big things that we've done back in January was we actually bought a electrical contractor. We have 40 electricians on staff that we pay an hourly rate versus a commercial rate. And the other benefit of owning an electrical contractor is you can negotiate preferred preferential pricing at 5% above distributor cost for all of our components versus paying a commercial rate again. So we're picking up margin, deploying our infrastructure and our capital in a very, very cost-effective manner, which allows us to pay back any operational expansion or capex much more quickly than our competitors. Below that, operational diagnostics, minor repair and pool, which I'll talk about. For comparison purposes, I talked about 94% power usage efficiency. <clears throat> Across the top, you can see 93, 96, 94, 92, 94. 94 being our average across the farms. This compares to a traditional data center, best in class, top quartile being around 85% efficient. A few pictures of our actual farms. This is our third facility, sorry, fourth facility, which we completed in January, a 10 megawatt asset located in St. Hyacinth. You see on the right side there is a custom design ventilation system. What you won't see, <coughs> excuse me, is air conditioning. All of these facilities are professionally designed, focused on ther thermodynamics, using negative pressure to draw hot air from the exhaust side of the miners or the facility. Our newest facility, located in Magog, Quebec, a 10 megawatt asset, which is currently being plugged in, and we press release that on Sunday this week. Here's a picture of our St. Hyacinth facility. Again, one of our op staff walking around with their mobile performance and monitoring software identifying machines that may or may not need to be repaired. <clears throat> a few pictures of um, our lab, uh, software monitoring center and a customized designed repair lab suited to our needs. Instead of relying upon third party, I'm sort of losing my voice, so I'm gonna end it off here, but <clears throat> Instead of relying upon the warranty programs for hardware manufacturers and two month lead times to get equipment back, we actually repair the machines in house with techs trained directly by the hardware manufacturer. Our mining pool launched about a week ago, sorry, a month ago. We're, we're uh, building hash power customers as we speak, expecting this to be a significant component of our business going forward. Again, <clears throat> Sorry for the uh, lack of Espanol. We're around for the rest of the day and tomorrow, and uh, we're here to answer any questions if you want to talk to us. Thank you very much.